And can you explain the, what BRCA testing is? Sure. I mean, genetic testing, uh, BRCA testing is a, a little subset of genetic testing. There's a panoply of things that, uh, you know, you go on for days talking about genetic therapy and genetic uh, diagnosis and whatnot. But BRCA is a, a gene in our bodies that helps uh, DNA uh, be properly repaired if there are any mistakes in the replication process. So anytime cells divide, they make a whole new set of DNA and it's a complex process and there inevitably will be mistakes. So the BRCA gene actually goes through and sorts out those mistakes and fixes them. And that uh, uh, is, a, um, uh, is messed up or broken in you know, three to four percent of the population. And then it's even more common in cancer patients because people that have that gene are more predisposed to getting advanced cancers, advanced prostate cancer. So it's relevant to know about it because the, uh, uh, those patients that have that particular mutation are more likely to respond to a medicine that further uh, retards DNA repair. Cancer cells are different than our cells because they divide and multiply more frequently. They're doing more DNA replication and if a person has BRCA, they're not those cancer cells aren't repairing the DNA quite as well. And so if you add a medicine like Olaparib, uh, Linparza, which further retards DNA repair, the number of mutations becomes so excessive that the cancer cells die. Mm. And the, uh, so identifying the BRCA gene and uh, giving such individuals Linparza or, or Olaparib, uh, and there are other products as well that can be tried, um, uh, it, those people will uh, have higher response rates to these medicines and better responses. And uh, so it's a logical thing to consider in people that have that specific mutation. Yeah. So when it comes to this test, should all prostate cancer patients get it? It's a blood test, right? Yeah, it's a, you can do genetic testing on the blood or they can do a mouth swab. The uh, uh, men that have advanced prostate cancer should get uh, genetic testing. Uh, whether all prostate cancer patients should have it done is debatable. Um, it's uh, genetic testing. Uh, there's a lot of genetic uh, stuff we don't know what to do with it yet. And of course, it can be kind of frightening if uh, information comes in that you've got certain mutations, but no one knows what to do with it. So is, is that, um, that's a downside to genetic testing. The upside is that if you find some sort of a correctable gene, that uh, maybe that will open the door for a new treatment you wouldn't have otherwise thought of. Now, I was reading a couple articles and they were talking about men who are getting prostate cancer really early in life, like in their 50s, should get BRCA testing uh, immediately because of how young they are. Can you speak to that a little bit? All right, so prostate cancer is super common as men get older and the, you don't have to postulate a family history or a genetic uh, issue for when older men get prostate cancer, but it's less common in younger men. And so you uh, are thinking that there's a higher chance of some specific familial mutation uh, that might be detected with testing. And when it comes to the test itself, let's say an advanced prostate cancer you know, patient takes this test, they find out they have this, do they just talk to their medical oncologist about the results? Like what's the next step of action? Yeah, I mean, it's usually ordered by the medical oncologist. And so the, um, who's a cancer specialist and He'll be probably advising the patient what uh, measures to take. Olaparib, the medicine that I mentioned before, is not free of side effects. It's kind of like a mild chemotherapy. So it's not like everybody that has this mutation should immediately go on that type of medicine. But it's nice to know that you may have one more arrow in the quiver, one additional effective therapy to use if, it, if the situation looks like it warrants aggressive treatment. Okay, and is Olaparib FDA approved for prostate cancer or it's not and it's approved for another type of cancer? Right, it's FDA approved for the treatment of ovarian cancer and there are studies ongoing to uh, validate its effectiveness in prostate cancer. So it's possible it will be uh, FDA approved. It can be used on an off-label basis. It can be purchased and, and uh, in appropriate cases for prostate cancer. Okay, most medical oncologists would be okay with um, giving something off-label or being able to purchase that if the person is positive for the BRCA gene? Yeah, I mean, it's always hard to predict what other doctors, uh, when you're talking about off-label treatments, the, um, uh, some doctors are very innovative and willing to um, 
embark upon a treatment that isn't FDA approved. Others are concerned that it's outside the box and maybe not inappropriate, so it's hard to say what any specific doctor would do. So that's really what an important point is with the patient then, is making sure that they know what they have and they know their tests and they have a doctor who's willing to work with them in these cases and kind of even think outside the box in these serious cases. Because we see a lot of guys, unfortunately, where the doctor is giving them I've seen guys, you know, where they have, their oncologist has kept them on Lupron forever and their PSA is going up to 10, 20, 30, 40, and they're calling us saying, you know, my doctor should be telling me to do something different, right? He says to keep looking at it. And I'm sitting here going, why are we know what this is? <laughs> so I is think that, I mean, I would think that might be more common in people that are being managed by urologists, uh, surgeons. Uh, the uh, medical oncologists uh, might want to withhold therapy if someone has a good quality of life and they don't see a, uh, an effective non-toxic treatment that would prolong life. Uh, and if they don't see it, it could be because they're um, aware or unaware. And that's why it is good to do your own research and find out what the options are and talk about it with your doctor. Mm. All right, well, thank you once again, Dr. Schultz. Uh, these questions, I'm, I'm learning every time, but I'm really excited for the patients to be able to get these answers. And um, I just really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching this video. We really appreciate it. If you have questions you would like me to ask one of our prostate cancer experts in the future, you can go ahead and leave your questions below. And please, if you like this video and you appreciate the content, give us a thumbs up and also subscribe to our channel. Every subscription from any subscriber that we get helps YouTube pick us up and then we become suggested videos for other prostate cancer patients who are looking and Googling prostate cancer all around the world. And this helps us spread the message of good prostate cancer information and also empowering them to learn and take control of their case. So we really appreciate your time. We love you very much. And if you need any help, we're right here at pcri.org.